So let's go right over to meteorologist Amanda Pappas, who's tracking the impacts here at home right now. You can see the area pretty calm right now. All is calm for the moment being. However, we do see bands of rain and wind are starting to move in, so that's something to keep in mind. Hurricane Helene right now located out in the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to use these very warm waters and interacts with some of the warmest waters actually in the entire Atlantic Basin to rapidly intensify. Within the next six hours, we're going to see this hurricane go from Cat 1 to Category 4 before making landfall along the Big Bend. And we're going to get that next update here within the next hour from the National Hurricane Center. But for right now, still holding on to that Category 4 strength before making landfall near Perry area, also Steinhatchee. And we just know that this area has been hit multiple times by not just this system, but also by Debbie Adalia. That's something else in mind. This morning, we do see that we have our own tropical storm warnings. Hurricane warnings for our northern coastal zones. They're going to be the ones to feel the most impacts in terms of Helene, and we do see that those bands of rain and wind are not letting up. Already seeing multiple tornado warnings to our south over towards portions of Highlands County for Lake O. We're seeing all of that continuing to gradually drift more northward, and as it does so, that means that we have that potential of seeing severe weather in the area. Take a look at radar right now. We continue to see these bands of rain and wind, and you see that yellow shading right there. Those are those moderate areas of rainfall. So not everyone is seeing the rain. Some areas are quiet a little closer to Tarpon Springs. You see only that lighter rain, that lighter green right here. Meanwhile, some more of that moderate rain over towards portions of Pasco County and into Polk County as well. Dry for right now over towards some of our inland zones for Highlands specifically and for DeSoto, but we are going to continue to see more of this rain. Take a look at the sheer strength of this system. The wind field over 200 miles wide, all that yellow that you see there. Those are those tropical storm force winds and then in that orange you can see those winds are going to be just very strong. They're going to continue to grow and expand as we see the cone. Yes, it's not going to be directly over our area. We are not in the cone and there's not going to be any sort of last minute turn. However, we have to not only keep in mind the cone, even though we're not in it, we're still going to feel those impacts far outside of the center of the cone. So that is what you want to have in mind. So even though you do not see us in the cone, we still are going to be impacted significantly here, especially for our northern coastal zones. And with how strong that wind is, remember wind is a force and it's going to push and pile up all this water into our area. And that's going to cause our number one threat, our number one impact, which is storm surge. And to talk more about storm surge and the other impacts that we face as meteorologist Mike Pringley. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Good job. And you talked about that big wind field, the size of this storm. And as we look at this morning, Morning, it looks like some of our first power outages. The highest wind gusts will start towards Sarasota, Manatee counties, and we're going to see these wind speeds really start to come up. Uh, so as we look at the overall picture, 20, 30 mile per hour winds will increase to 40, 50, and 60 mile per hour winds by late morning and early afternoon. We look at our severe weather outlook, big impacts with isolated tornadoes as well. Already we've had some tornado warnings across South Florida, and as these feeder bands is what we call them, move in toward the center of the storm as it moves to the north, uh, we're going to start to see these increase across the area and we could see some of the severe weather and isolated tornado threats as we head into especially mid to late morning and again this afternoon and you can see the overall track as it moves to the north making a beeline up toward Perry, Florida and making a move north and then eventually to the north northwest. So we'll continue to watch the big impacts here across the area that do include the most of the impacts between now and Friday at 6 a.m. Storm surge of five to eight feet plus. We'll take a closer look at that rainfall of three to six inches and we have up the wind wind field 50 to 80 mile per hour gusts because of the sheer size and strength of the storm that will undergo rapid intensification. We'll talk more about that coming right up.